Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm about to invest in a project that I'm hoping to earn 500% return on my investment or 500% interest. And hopefully, the, the key is that hopefully I'm going to be able to earn that within a few days to a few weeks, a couple of months at most. That's my hope. Don't know if it's going to happen, but in this video, I'm going to share with you the project. I'm going to share with you their current track record, what they've been able to accomplish. It's really the project's track record that has me the most enthusiastic about this opportunity coming up because there's a brand new opportunity. Nothing in this video should be considered financial advice. I'm just a very biased cryptocurrency YouTuber. I love cryptocurrency. I believe this technology is going to change the freaking world. And I believe those of us that are willing to invest in a bear market have the opportunity to make the greatest gains. And I believe the biggest gains in crypto will happen because we are here first. We are early adopters. We are early pioneers in this space. And if you love cryptocurrency, if you believe this is the technology of the future, do me a favor and smash that like button. Click that subscribe button. Click that bell notification icon. Let's get into this. So I'm going to share with you the project. I'm going to share with you my overall thoughts on the project. I'm going to share with you just like I do with most of my videos the pros and the cons even though I'm excited about this project I think it's important to recognize that there are risks and be aware of what those risks are again this is not financial advice ladies and gentlemen this is just my opinions about this project so why am I excited about the project well we're talking about a project that had an incredibly fair launch eight and a half months ago we're talking about a project that had no pre-sale no pre-mine, no developer allocation for tokens. That's right. This is unheard of. We're talking about a project that grew from $100 to a $100 million market cap within an eight and a half month period. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Beanstalk protocol. Beanstalk initially launched August 2021 with just 100 beans. This is a, a credit-based stablecoin, the first of its kind. Some of their mechanics are incredibly interesting, but the return on investment that they were able to provide for early adopters was insane. We're talking about people getting 1,000%, 6,000% I think is the highest I heard of. And right now, in this relaunch they're going to be doing on Saturday, we can take advantage of up to 500% interest or 500% ROI. This thing grew from 100 beans, never took any sort of traditional funding. In eight months, it grew organically to $100 million in market cap attracting 144 million in long-term incentivized liquidity i'll explain what this is more in a moment the on-chain governance attack that's what happened the, it's important to understand they had an attack of their own chain governance not the economic design the design was not exploited at all basically this thing was 100 decentralized to the core the developers at the time were totally anonymous they've since doxed themselves but the developers were totally anonymous at the time there was an attack that basically submitted a proposal proved those proposal and basically had all the beans go to one address and it was all done with a flash loan and a, through the DAO. It was a true DAO. Now they've made changes to the governance model and now basically there's a multi-sig approval that has to take place on all votes is my understanding. They've had to add a little layer of centralization for the approval of the votes to prevent that sort of exploit. They went through a brand new audit through Hal Burton and Trail of Bits. So I'm incredibly excited about this. I want to share with you an open letter from the developers and then I'm going to cover some the actual mechanics of how the protocol works and I'm going to explain how the 500% interest works that I'm investing in. And I'm going to show you exactly how I made that investment. Thoughts before the barn race from Publius. Publius is the developers. It came out after the governance attack that there were three developers. They were all operating under the name Publius initially. Dear community, as we approach the start of the barn raise and the replanting of Beanstalk draws near, we wanted to publish some thoughts on why we started and continue to contribute to Beanstalk. Given the recent implosion of Terra and the subsequent general skepticism around the potential of a non-collateralized stablecoin, this feels timely. In our opinion, the biggest friction point holding back the adoption of permissionless technology are the high carrying costs of stablecoins. On-chain economic activity cannot compete with off-chain economic activity because borrowing costs are so much higher on-chain. Supply cannot meet demand due to the opportunity costs associated with locking up collateral in a bank account. Despite our conviction of the importance of a non-collateralized stablecoin, it required some serendipity for us to begin working on Beanstalk. In November of 2020, we happened to be this in the same location around Thanksgiving 
Thanksgiving and hung out. At the time, ESD was the talk of DeFi. The hype around ESD as a non-collateralized stablecoin was aligned with our conviction about the frictions around collateralized stablecoin models. That evening, we read the ESD white paper together. While we were inspired by some of the contents, there was also apparent economic deficiencies throughout the model. That evening, we decided, meaning the group of three Publius, that evening, we decided to work on an ESD fork as a side project that we thought would take two to three months. While the original problem attempted to be solved was high carrying cost on chain, over time, we realized that Bing stock was actually an attempt at creating decentralized fiat money backed by nothing but the credit of the protocol. And this right here, the credit of the protocol is what makes Beanstalk so different from every other algorithmic stablecoin you've ever seen or heard about. In the end, Beanstalk was influenced heavily by ESD, was designed from first principles from the ground up. Instead of a two to three month side project, it was an eight plus month sprint to design, develop, and ultimately deploy Beanstalk on the Ethereum mainnet on August 6th of 2021. Having appreciated the grand ambition of Beanstalk, we decided to deploy the protocol in the fashion we believed would set the protocol up for the highest probability of long-term success. There was no pre-sale, pre-mine, team allocation, or any sort of public or private funding round. We were totally anonymous. The first 100 beans were minted when the protocol was deployed. Since then, Beanstalk has been allowed to run its course. So this is incredible. This is a team that appears to, at their very core, be really focused on the principles of decentralization initially more than the money-making opportunities that exist in crypto. So oftentimes developers are all about making certain they get paid first and then hopefully they can create a great project. And I understand that. I understand people have a profit motive. I, I get it. But Bitcoin was started by someone who had a philosophical motive first. Beanstalk seems to be started the same way with someone who has a philosophical or a group of people who have a philosophical motive. And I think that that's good. I think that's healthy. I think that's where true innovation comes from. This is where I get excited, by the way, about the future of Beanstalk. Over the next eight plus months, the bean supply, bean is pegged to $1, keep that in mind, grew organically without subsidies to over $108 million. That's a $108 million valuation. The value of assets trading against beans in liquidity pools grew to $77 million. The bean price crossed its peg of $1 over 4,000 times. And perhaps most importantly, bean stock decreases debt levels dramatically from 1,600% to 600%, demonstrating its ability to deleverage in an autonomous fashion. Until Beanstalk was attacked on April 17th, 2022 and rendered temporarily useless, the attackers stole the $77 million of liquidity that traded against beans, thereby destroying their value. Now, right now they're going to relaunch and we'll talk about the relaunch in a moment, but this is incredible right here. So once you understand the mechanics, I'll explain it here in a moment, you're going to see that the protocol takes on debt. One of the fears is that the protocol can't, protocol can't also pay off its own debt. That was one of the fears early on. But they show you that at one point in time, their total debt load was 1,600% at its peak, and they had paid it down to 600% roughly. More than half of it had gotten paid off. Now, as investors, early adopters, these people that were getting paid off, it's important to understand some of them were getting paid off at 200 300% interest, 500 600 800 1000 and there may be more, but I heard, uh, at least I heard one person in Discord supposedly got a repayment of 6,000%. Like, that's just insanity. That means $10,000 would have got you $600,000, for example. Again, we'll explain how that works a little bit later in the video as we go through this. The version of Beanstalk that was attacked on April 17th was a significant improvement on the original model. The original Beanstalk model deployed in August 2021, while good enough to not die during the first pump and dump that killed the vast majority of previous attempts at non-collateralized stablecoins. ESD, DSD, TESD, and basis cash. It wasn't good enough to sustain itself in perpetuity. So this is important. It outlasted all the other non-collateralized stable coins, which by the way, none of them were credit-based in the way that Beanstalk and the Bean token is. Since launch, Beanstalk has been improved by more than a dozen Beanstalk improvement proposals, BIP. Most notably, BIP7 introduced a convert functionality that is now a core piece of Beanstalk's peg maintenance model. Unfortunately, the same permissionless on-chain governance model that facilitated the Beanstalk DAO implementation of these changes was damaged. Nonetheless, it is a success of each BIP in continuously improving the model as evident in the data that ultimately gives us hope about Beanstalk's long-term chances of success. At present, and this is what I love, I love the honesty of the team. At present, it is unclear whether Beanstalk is good enough to sustain itself in perpetuity, however you say that. There still remain some inefficiencies in the model, and this is true by the way, 
part of the inefficiencies is on the credit side, which in the short to medium term is incredibly profitable. Long term, can these inefficiencies be improved? We'll have to wait and see. Can, or does it matter? Will these inefficiencies sink the model? We'll have to wait and see. However, Beanstalk is likely good enough to continue to sustain itself in the short term with the benefit of sufficient future positive iterations by the Dow. Hopefully, Beanstalk can sustain itself in the long term. We are very excited about the opportunity to continue participating in discourse with other members of the Beanstalk community on further improvements. So they believe that this can sustain itself in the short term. I also believe that, by the way, and obviously I'm biased because I want to see this project succeed. This is partially why I'm making the investment that I'm making, because I think in the short term, all I need is for this thing to do well in the short term for me to make 500% on my investment. I'll explain exactly how the investment works once we finish this article here. So here we are about to collectively re-embark on this journey. This time we are doxxed. There is nowhere to hide in the instance of failure. It is in that spirit that we take this opportunity to raise some of the questions on our minds about the long-term sustainability of Beanstalk and its role in the permissionless economy that is fast approaching. Can fiat money be better than hard money? If arbitrary spending is entirely removed from the system, is currency inflation acceptable? If it is to create price stability and the sin joinage is transparently, autonomously, and fairly distributed, is such an inflationary environment preferable to a similarly autonomous and fair deflationary environment such as BTC and ETH? And this is a great question, meaning if we create a project that is inflationary based on market demand, is that going to be more favorable for a currency than something that's deflationary like BTC and ETH? Can fiat money sustain itself without the rule of law to enforce its acceptance as legal tender? Very good question. How should we define success? If Beanstalk oscillates the bean price above and below its peg for 10 years or 100 or 1,000, is that success? How many crosses need to be made in that time? If Bean expedites the adoption of decentralized technologies by making on-chain dollars cheaper in the short and medium term, but is no longer needed and ultimately collapses because of the adoption of ETH or BTC as a global medium of exchange in the long term, would that be success or failure? The lack of a good answer here is somewhat comforting. What should Beans be pegged to other than just other fiat currency? How does this affect the sustainability of the model given the massive tailwinds the devaluation of the US dollar is for the protocol? Without this tailwind, is the model sustainable? What would it actually mean for Beanstalk to issue a bean with the goal of being stable, not compared to another fiat currency, but some amount of purchasing power? What is price stability in the context of a sophisticated economy? Could Beanstalk sustain a bean pegged to Bitcoin? Listen, this whole article right here, I mean, like you could just marinate, your brain could just soak this in and then probably explode with all the possibilities here. This is the kind of thinking that I, these are legit devs. Like these are people who, who get it. This, this is a potential massive project and they understand there's no guarantee of success and how do you define success investor long-term failure could mean that the project was still successful depending on how you measure success i believe in the short term the pot profit potential could be incredible as long as we're able to launch effectively which is going to take place this saturday the nature of these questions reflects our opinion that beanstalk is likely already strong enough to scale significantly and sustainably as it had started to prior to the attack one of the main attractions of the most aggressive barn raised strategy laid out in bfp 72 is that beanstalk is likely being replanted with a ridiculously high pod rate in other words all the odds are stacked against them we have some of the worst macroeconomics that we've had in a decade we've had one of the worst crypto market in years the stablecoin market has been beat up. All sorts of external uh, circumstances. Can this work? If it works, we're going to know very, very quickly. And if it does work, it's going to be a proven model. And I think, I mean, I think this thing could print money potentially. But the thing about a system like Beanstalk is that it works until it doesn't. You can never actually know if it works, only that it has worked so far. Gosh, I love that statement. Talk about fair commentary from the dev team. So much uncertainty is scary, particularly without a clear definition of success. Perhaps we are foolish for trying. While nobody can answer the above questions at present, the beauty of free market is that time will. Love, love this last paragraph, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited about this project. Now, let me just show you how kind of how Beanstalk works, and then I'm going to show you how 
I'm investing in it. We got the bean token over here. The bean token is pegged to a dollar. When the bean token is above a dollar, more beans are printed, just like a lot of algorithmic stable coins. But if you're familiar with a lot of stable coins, the excess beans go to a boardroom. Bean tokens don't go to a boardroom. 50% goes to the pod line. 50% gets distributed evenly to those that are staked in the silo. This is kind of like a boardroom uh, with a twist I'll share in a moment. That's when it's above peg. That's how it worked prior to the exploit. Basically, every time it was above peg, excess beans were printed. 50% paid down their debt. 50 percent went to everyone's state in the silo people in the silo were earning somewhere around 100 percent apr i people made a lot of money in the pod line the challenge of the pod line is you only get paid off as a protocol can pay you off you have to sit and wait for your funds so how does the pod line work when the bean token is below peg that means that they need to incentivize buying the bean token you can buy beans and lend it to the protocol. The protocol basically will lock up your beans in what they call pods and you'll be put in the pod line. What will happen, the protocol has an interest rate. It will say at the end of the epoch when it's below peg, hey, we're gonna pay whatever. 20% interest and you know there will be amount of credit needed so there'll be soil. So they're gonna pay 20% interest. So let's just say it's on you know $50,000. It could be a million dollars, it doesn't matter. That's the amount of what they call soil. And then they call weather is the interest rate. I know they got some crazy terminology. But basically, they're saying, hey, we're willing to pay this much interest for this much credit. And you can buy beans, which obviously pushes the price up. Once you buy beans, go into the pod line. So you buy beans and then you would end up here in the pod line. You're at the very back of the pod line. Obviously, more than one creditor that would buy beans and put them in the pod line. Once it's above peg again, it starts printing 50% of the extra goes to the pod line, 50% goes to everyone's state in the silo. That's how it worked. At one point, the bean token went all the way down to 30 cents. That's where people got crazy, crazy interest rate. Then all the way down to 30 cents and it came back. That is incredible. I'm not certain how many stable coins have ever done that. With, uh, without any interference, total just decentralization, it came all the way back. That's insane if you think about it. Once the liquidity got pulled out of the protocol, they're relaunching, right? The, the, the liquidity got pulled out because of the, the governance model, not because it attacked this model here. Basically, there was a proposal that allowed one address to get all the beans and the proposal, proposal was approved by the DAO through a flash loan attack. That's essentially what happened. So now what they're doing is people are stuck in the silo right now and there's no way for them to get their beans out without taking a significant haircut on their losses. They're doing a barn raise. And what happens is they have people who are putting in what are called fertilizer. This is where I'm making my money right now. So fertilizer is individuals in here and we're all putting funds in. Right now, up until the sixth, everything you put in, you'll get paid back at about 500%. People who have their beans in the silo, the way they're making them whole is they have to stay in there or they get penalized significantly but they have to stay in the silo until everyone is paid back in the money that's raised for the fertilizer. So, so they're looking for a total of $77 million worth of fertilizer. Everyone has to get paid back for the fertilizer. And at that point, the, all the silo holders will be made whole. So it's not like we're lending money to the protocol. So, so we're just exit liquidity for these people. We have to actually get paid back for them to be able to get out completely. So now here's what happens. When the project is above peg, and it's going to launch at 1.02 cents. So it will be above peg basically at launch. But when the project is above peg, what happens is a third, one third, not one half, one third goes to the pod line. One third of new beans go to the silo holders. And one third goes to everyone in the fertilizer, but it's, it's distributed across the board. It's not like in a, a queue like the pod line. So everyone gets paid equally basically. The only difference is what percentage they get paid at. Some people will be getting paid at 500%. Some people will be getting paid 250% and less. So the way the fertilizer works, we're going to be getting paid back. 500% uh, humidity is the interest rate for fertilizer. We're getting paid back 500% on the 6th at launch. It will automatically drop to 250% for anyone who comes in. And then it will decrease by 0.5% every season, which is every hour. That's what they call their epoch until 20% humidity is reached. So we'll keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping. 0.5% every hour. So I've went in with you know almost 8,000. I'll probably come in with, uh, I'll have 10 or $12,000 in here before the six, hopefully. And the hope being that if this thing relaunches successfully, we're gonna be getting paid back every single time that we're above peg. And again, 
The economics have been proven to work previously. The only question, the only risk that I see in this entire model is does the community still believe in the project? And I believe the community does believe in the project. By the way, this 63 million is going to go down. I think it's going to go down a good bit more before we launch because I think the last, uh, the last day you're going to see more funds coming in here. The less funds that come in at launch, the better because I think we make our 500% back faster the less funds that actually come in. So I probably shouldn't even be making this video, but hey, those of you that are my subscribers, if this works, we can all make money together. Anybody can buy fertilizer at any point in time after launch. The only difference is the interest rate they're going to be paying. The benefit to buying the fertilizer is you don't have to wait in line to get paid back. You start getting paid back immediately every single time that bean is above peg. How do you actually buy fertilizer or how am I buying fertilizer? The best way to do it is with USDC on ETH. So if you have USDC on ETH, you just come over here, connect your MetaMask and, you know, put in your USDC and then you can buy fertilizer. Now, I will tell you, they are giving away some special NFTs for every, I think it's $1,000 increment to get some special NFTs. So like I'll be adding some more to this. Now I have, you know, some Binance Smart Chain and I have cryptos on other chains. You can always, you know, use a central exchange. What I use, changenow.network. I actually only use my exchange for my actual trading on an account. Typically when I make exchanges from a cross chain, say in this case, Bitcoin, which I got some Bitcoin I'm sending over, Bitcoin to USDC, I use changenow.network and then click exchange. It's going to ask you to enter in the payout address. You put your payout address here. Then you're going to click next. And then you're going to send 0 0.1 BTC in this case, or whatever amount BTC you're sending. And by the way, it doesn't have to be BTC. It could be Tron. It could be anything else. I mean, uh, you send it to this address and basically it'll take about 10 minutes or less. They'll do all the exchanges and they'll send it back to uh, your address down here. Once you have the USDC ETH, just come to the app and make your purchase. And by the way, it's app.bean.money. By the way, changenow.network is an affiliate link, just a heads up. You'll be supporting the channel if you use changenow.network. But if, if you want to bring in anything, you can use Tron, BNB, XRP, Cardano. I mean, literally all sorts of stuff you can use to make an exchange. I use this website all the time, changenow.network. I use changenow.network all the time. Now, if you want to find out exactly what I'm going to be doing with the profits that I make inside of Beanstalk, assuming that this goes well, Make certain that you subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned as I'll share that with you in a future video. Ladies and gentlemen, decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This project stands to be one of the most successful decentralized algorithmic stablecoins that has ever existed. What they're looking to accomplish is extraordinary. Will it succeed? Who knows? Most often in crypto, a project does not have to succeed long term for you to be able to be successful as an investor. You just have to be able to diversify your investments, manage your risk, and always take profits off the table. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Crypto Wealth. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.